The spillway crumbling, the campfire, and now the coronavirus. Butte County has seen its share of crises. Sheriff Corey Honey joins us live with more on the local impact of the virus for citizens and his staff. Sheriff, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Debbie. It's a pleasure to be with you. Straight up, are we seeing a drop in crime? So interestingly enough, I uh, ran the stats, and so uh, looking at the time frame from when the uh, shelter-in-place order was issued to, to date, uh, we're about 400 fewer incidents uh, during that same time frame as it compared to last year. That's pretty impressive. What are you doing, Sheriff, to protect your staff and deputies who patrol for us? Well, uh, this is a big concern. Obviously, if your first responders uh, are impacted and they can't be out there on the streets protecting people, uh, then it lessens the safety for all of us. Uh, we've been working with our staff, uh, providing them with information about how to protect themselves. In addition to that, we're providing them with protective equipment like uh, masks, gloves, uh, eye protection, and uh, hand sanitizer. We're encouraging them to social distance whenever possible uh, and making sure that they're wiping surfaces down, wiping their vehicles down, cleaning their hands, things of that nature. Sheriff, have you seen any coronavirus cases in your inmate population, and what steps are you taking to protect them? So we have not. Uh, we are uh, taking a lot of steps, actually, to try to keep uh, the coronavirus from uh, uh, entering the jail. And then if it does, of course, mitigating its overall exposure. Uh, but uh, among the things that we're doing, uh, we have uh, instituted an enhanced screening procedure so that anybody brought to the jail uh, before they're taken into the jail, uh, they're uh, contacted by one of our medical staff, uh, their temperature is taken, and they're asked questions uh, to determine whether or not they might have been exposed to COVID-19. If they have a high temperature or they uh, answer those questions in a way that leads us to believe that they might have been exposed, uh, then we have some enhanced authority under our consent decree to reject them uh, from entering the jail. And then there's some mechanisms that we have in place to deal with those individuals who we can't reject. So what I mean by that is if you have somebody who's arrested for a violent crime uh, and they, ex they, they exhibit some of those symptoms, we're still going to have to contend or deal with that situation in the jail. And so we have procedures within the facility to isolate them and protect uh, the other uh, inmates who are there. We're also screening uh, staff members when they come to work each day to make sure that uh, they're not impacted by COVID-19. So that leads me to my next uh, question, Sheriff. You hear some leaders around the country talk about releasing inmates because of the virus. Would that create a bigger problem? It seems like if you release them, it would make them more vulnerable and also make our community more vulnerable. Well, I, I think it's important to consider all of those elements. And, and I'd start by saying that due to the design and inherent security issues common in all correctional facilities, you have inmates who are in close proximity to other inmates and staff. And when you have people in close proximity, there's always the uh, chance for uh, the virus to spread. So reducing jail population certainly can mitigate the risk of infection within the facility. However, and I think it's important to uh, emphasize this point, public safety concerns need to be carefully balanced with the concerns uh, over the health and well-being of the inmates. And so for that reason, here in Butte County, we put into effect a number of protective measures uh, they're implemented uh, within the uh, facility to try to, one, keep uh, the virus from getting in there, and then if it does, um, limit the exposure to the inmate population. But at the end of the day, uh, you just have to recognize that um, there are some people who pose too great a risk to public safety, and you have to ultimately deal with them uh, within the facility. And I'll add this, because to your point is important. Uh, you have individuals who um, perhaps are homeless or suffer from mental health issues, and just to release them back on the streets could put them at a greater uh, uh, disadvantage or put them in a greater harm. And so in um, those cases, I think it's important for us to look at whether or not keeping them in jail is actually providing them with um, uh, Increased shelter. Increased safety. Yeah, perhaps. food, medical supplies. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Sheriff Honey, thank you so much for your in input and your insight. Uh, we thank you for your time, Sheriff. Thank you. Goodbye. All right, thank you. We